Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Levittown Public Library, Agoscu with Kimberly Sabat on November 8th, Monday at 11 a.m. Take it away, Kimberly. Thank you very much. Welcome back. And for some of you who are new, welcome fresh. Welcome fresh. We're not going to use any crazy stuff today, just a pillow off of your bed, or some of you have your Agoscu blocks or even those yoga blocks, those pink yoga blocks, you're gonna use those today. Um, I don't think we're gonna use the strap, but we are also going to be using a chair or an ottoman. So something that's about 26 inches in height and comes to hip height from your hip to your knee. We're gonna be using that for any of our floor exercises where we're trapping our legs. Uh, those of you that are new to Agascu, I caught a couple of you that are that are new. Agascu is just uh, equivalent to posture. It's just a dude's last name, that's all. And what we're going to do today is we're going to stimulate your body in different ways that you don't do throughout the day, the week, or maybe the years, and your body is going to autocorrect itself. One key point is that you must listen to your body. So if something doesn't feel right to you or something hurts, please stop the movement. I'll give as many modifications as I can think of, but sometimes I just can't help everybody in this class format. So I'll do my best to do so, but you've got to listen to yourself. So if something isn't working, just skip the movement and just wait and we'll move on. We're gonna start out in a standing position today and I don't want anybody to fix anything because a couple of you are new. So I really want you to get a feel for where you are this morning. So you're just gonna march in place a couple of steps and then just be and notice, this is our assessment. Am I leaning more on my left, more on my right? Maybe it feels even, leaning more forward, back. What's going on? How does it feel? Let's do another test. You're gonna bend over and you're gonna fall forward. I don't care if you touch your toes or not, but just notice where you hit, where it goes. Does one leg feel tighter than the other maybe? We're just noticing what's going on. Now we're gonna do another functional test. I don't care which leg it is. You're gonna pick up one of your knees to hip height. More than likely, the leg that you still have on the ground is the one that you're leaning more heavily to. So that's usually a test that I use for myself to check where people are at. Then go ahead and check it out with the other side. Oh, <laughs> Kim stinks today. <laughs> yep, Kim stinks this morning. I did zero Egoscu. So you're seeing me fresh. My left side is less in alignment than my right side. So I usually have a harder time balancing on my left side, but that will change. Okay, everybody, functional test and assessment over. We're gonna start heading into the exercises. I want you to put your feet hip distance. We're gonna mingle elbow curls with three position toe raise. So I want you to take your fist and put it in between your big toes. That's usually hip distance. So my ankles and my knees are in alignment with my hips. My hip distance between the joints never changes. Doesn't matter how many donuts I eat, it's about the joints. So I'm gonna take you through three position toe raise and elbow curls. I want you to lift up off of your heels onto the balls of your feet and then lower back down. But I want you to do it without rolling your ankles in or out. So as your ankles, uh, you hit this top position, tendency is for the ankles to roll out. See what I just did there? That's supination. Don't do that. I want you to stay nice and even across the balls of your feet. Even if you have to hang on to something, even if you have to hold something, I want you to stay even. We're going for 10. Can't do 10, do one. Can't do this standing. Hey, maybe you're in a wheelchair. One of my clients is in a wheelchair. We do this sitting down. Get creative and just do what you can. You've got to move something. But for the most part, everybody that I usually have, you guys aren't wheelchair bound. We don't want to get there either. But if it happens, we can progress. We're going to keep the feet pointed straight ahead. I want you to take your hands to modified golf grip. Some of you are new, so you're gonna watch this. Take your hands into fists and then flatten your fists. It's gonna look like that. And take that grip with your hands, put your knuckles on your temples, keep your feet right where they were, nice and straight. Knuckles on your temples, open your elbows so you'll feel your shoulders squeeze together and then close. Maybe you can touch your elbows together without bending your wrists. Bending the wrist is a no-no. So this is a shoulder movement. We're actually treating the shoulder like a hinge here. So do not bend your wrists. Keep your knuckles on your temples. Open all the way, close all the way. Back and forth. Keep your knuckles on your temples. My one client, she ends up like right here. I wanna smack her. Hello, <laughs> her hand is so far away from her head. Keep your knuckles on your temples. I know it's a little tough. 
our next foot position is going to be everted. So you're going to rotate out and you're going to do a ballerina, not 12 and uh, not nine and, uh, and three. Do more like 10 and two. So I want like a 45 degree angle. My heels are still underneath my hips, ladies and gentlemen. And we're going to lift up and lower again. Even here, I don't want you supinating your ankles. So I want you to stay balanced across the ball of each foot. Sometimes I have to think, maybe put a little more pressure on my big toe side of my foot because my ankles want to supinate as I lift. That's a tendency that everybody kind of has here. The ankle wants to supinate. Don't let it, keep it balanced. We're gonna keep the feet in this everted position and go right back to elbow curls. So heels down now, everybody, knuckles touch your temples. Keep that grip really strong. Grip must stay open, close. Treating the shoulder like a hinge. So on your back, your shoulders are actually retracting and protracting the shoulder blades. We're trying to get both shoulder blades to work more symmetrically. Guaranteed, nobody's got that going on. We all have to some degree an imbalance. Our last foot position is the most challenging. If you feel like you're gonna fall, hang on to something. We're going to invert. So I'm rotating in from both of my femurs, my thigh bones. I'm not walking my feet in and using the stickiness of my feet so that I end up like this. I'm staying in a position that my hips can hold. So I want your knees to stay straight when you do this. So I don't care if, if your feet look almost parallel. I want your toes to touch. So touch your toes and walk your heels out. You want them to be even, but you wanna be able to sustain it with straight knees. Don't hurt yourself. Here we go, lift. Just 10, keep the feet where they are. Do not bend your knees, don't fall in on me. Knuckles to temples, open and close, elbow curls. I am stealing this routine. You guys can find this routine with a nice handsome guy doing it and Pete Agoscu talking you through it on YouTube. It's the feet and femur realigner. So if you just look that up, Bigoscu, feet, femur, you'll find this. And it does get hard. This one is gonna get hard. You guys are gonna hate me towards the end. Okay, I'm gonna take you guys into static back. Usually we hit this one first, but we're gonna hit this one for three minutes right now. You're gonna lay on your back, the floor is best, but if you can't get onto the floor, I guess you can do the bed and just pile up a bunch of pillows. But I'd like you guys to be able to get to the floor. The floor is flat, the floor will not allow you to compensate. You wanna trap yourselves. Static back for three minutes. If, as you lay back, you notice that your head is pointing behind you because your upper back and shoulders are so rounded, I want you to put a pillow underneath your head. You want to keep your face pretty neutral to the ceiling, but you don't want to do that actively. You want it to happen naturally. So this is a move where we just kind of lay there. This should not feel active to you. Should not feel active to you at all. Three minutes. Just letting my arms rest with my palms up. If that's hard for you to do, you might have to bring your arms out almost to a T shape, but we want the shoulders to start to fall backwards using gravity. None of this in static back is conscious effort. None of it is conscious effort. Do, 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 do. You guys are gonna hate me. Uh, if you don't have your pillow nearby, I forgot the sequence. I have so many sequences here. If you don't have your pillow nearby, after our three minutes is up, you're going to grab your pillow. We're doing static back knee pillow squeezes. So you're going to leave that block nearby. Block or pillow. <sighs> Wow. 
I know how long this routine is as well. So I'm gonna give you two routines, one of which you've never seen before because it's actually a routine for working out with your kids and it's kind of fun, but that doesn't mean that we can't do it. It's fun, it's short. And I remember from last week, a few of you messaged me about the bear crawls, how you were just starting to get it and then it ended. So I'm gonna stick in lateral bear crawls again. Hope I can remember. <laughs> Ditsy Kim. I just keep talking so much, I've got nobody to bounce off of. So if all I hear is my own voice, I can really take myself off on a tangent and I just forget what I planned. <laughs> I'm sorry about that. Remember, this is a settling position. You might get cramps in it if you've never been in it before. It actually is an active position, but not on purpose, not consciously active. Muscles are working here as easy as this move feels. Keep your pillow nearby, everybody. We're gonna stay in the static back position. So we're still trapped at these 90 degree angles in our hips and in our knees, you're gonna put the pillow in between your knees. If it is an actual pillow off of your bed, fold it in half or fold it in thirds. If you can, you want a lot of resistance. You know, squeeze it and release it. I'm not dropping the pillow, but just like Suzanne Summers with Thigh Master, I'm applying some pressure and letting it go. I don't want you to kill it because if you try really hard, you'll notice the tailbone lifts up off of the floor, your hamstrings start kicking in. No, 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 no. Give maybe 50% effort, 40% effort. I've even told some people to do 30% effort, especially if they've got one leg that's really working hard and the other one isn't doing a darn thing. So just squeeze and release. This is about balance. This is not about effort. That's okay, you can fall down. Just over and over, everybody. I have had clients in the past, usually runners, <laughs> runners that just a mile a minute, just da, 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 don't want to slow down. They have a tendency to squeeze this like, like a machine gun, like staccato, bam, 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 bam. Apply even pressure, everybody. Again, we want to go for balance. So squeeze, release, squeeze, release, squeeze, release. It's not tap, 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 tap. Squeeze, release. You have to spend a certain amount of time contracting the muscles in order for them to kind of wake up and start to recruit themselves properly. If you, if you do it too quickly, something else is gonna happen. And we don't want that. Even pressure, even pressure. Our next move is pullbacks. You're gonna keep the pillow or block right where it is. And I want you to think about the first position we did with our feet straight ahead when we were standing. I want your legs to look like that. So go ahead and look at your legs. You're gonna apply a little pressure on the block, just enough so that it doesn't fall. You're gonna pull your knees back just a bit so that it's off of your static back block or your ottoman. And you extend your knees with your ankles dorsiflexed. So it's like I'm putting my footprints on the ceiling. I want you to try your best to keep your legs as straight and perfect to your eye as you can make them. And then replace, pull back. Extend, replace. That's it, ladies and gentlemen. These are static back pullbacks. If you always keep in the back of your mind, 
where are the 90 degree angles? Where can I create 90 degree angles? You're not gonna go wrong. So right now we're trying to teach both of the hips to work evenly. This is, this is a strength builder. This is a strength builder. It's a realigner and a strength builder. Sometimes we have to do harder, more challenging moves in order for our realignment routine to actually keep to stay throughout the day or the next day or the next few days. Doing a bunch of the baby moves. They're, they're nice, but they may require more effort for you, especially if you've been doing Agoski for a while. You might also get bored. We don't want that. That's also one of the key components of a good menu. If a menu is boring to do, my client is not gonna do it. So I've gotta make sure that the menus are intense enough to create change, short enough so that they'll be able to do it, and exciting enough. <laughs> Keep on going everybody, I know you're feeling some, some tired muscles, maybe some aches, some tension. You don't have to go as fast as me. Take a break if you need to. Our next move is going to be isolated femur rotations. I'm gonna take this on the ground. Yes, you guys, are go we're going into hook line position. So if you do have a roll and you know that the roll helps you with your lower back, you can certainly use that now. I left mine in the car, so no roll for me. Okay, hook line position is laying on your back with your knees bent. I want you to start out with your feet at hip distance. Everything is gonna stay hip distance here. I'm gonna extend my right leg straight out along the floor and let it rest. I'm going to keep my thigh nice and tight though. I want that block in the way. Keep my thigh nice and tight and keep my ankle dorsiflex. I want my whole leg locked because all of this work is gonna come from my hip. I'm rotating my femur in and out. So my foot is actually gonna look like a windshield wiper. I go back and forth all the way in all the way out. I keep my hand right where my front pocket would be if I was wearing a pair of jeans. Show you another angle. So my foot is rotating in and out, in and out. Putting my hand here reminds me that this is where the movement comes from. Not from my foot, not from my ankle. If you're new and you haven't done this before or you're semi-new, I want you to look at your foot, especially at the end of the movement. Pick your head up and look at your foot. If you notice your ankle is starting to wave your foot back and forth, eh, do not do that. I want you to only move from your hip. Switch your side. I've been doing this for years, so I know what it feels like when I start moving my foot or my ankle or even my toes. So I'm pretty aware, but every now and then I will look up just make sure I haven't had a therapist look at me in say a good two and a half years now. It's always good to have another pair of eyes. These are supine isolated femur rotations. Kind of love the names for all of these exercises. All they do is explain what's happening in the exercise. It's good. We're not calling these soccer ball kickers or anything. It's just femur rotations. Switch. Again, keep your feet in line with your hip. I don't want you to end up splitting your leg out to the side or even letting your knee on your bent leg drop in or drop out. Ankles, knees, hips, stay in the same alignment. This is going to translate to how we stand later. And we're gonna, if I remember, we're gonna reassess. Remember how we assessed in the beginning? You can assess at any time. You wanna stand up and you wanna check it out. Gee, what did this do to me? Go ahead, check it out. But we are going to reassess later. All of these moves count. Switch again. 
This is a pretty intense version of femur rotations. It's isolated. It's very focused. Some of you might have a hard time doing this. You could do this sitting in a chair. You could do this laying on a bed. You could do this in so many positions, everybody. So many positions. Just, just rotating your, your hip. That's all it is. But if you need an easier version of it, that's our next move. Switch one more time. I'm going to go a right leg and then I'm going to go a left leg and we're moving on. Keep your thigh muscle tight. I do not want any knees bending. Because once you rotate out and the knee starts to bend, guess what? It's bending because your hip is not completing the movement. So you're letting a knee bend confuse you with, oh yeah, I'm still, I'm still rotating from my hip. No, you're not. Switch. These are one of my favorite moves. They're pain because they take so long to do because they're isolated one leg at a time. But I feel so much better after I do these. We're waking up the muscles that rotate and reminding them that their job is to rotate, not anything else. It's supposed to support big movements like flexion and extension, but the rotating muscles should not be doing the big movements. So that's what this does. This really wakes them up. Okay, knee drops are next. This is a easy, an easier version of femur rotations. So people that can't do femur rotations, I might give them knee drops, a little easier. Keep your feet hip distance and keep them parallel on the floor. Hip distance and parallel. You're gonna drop your knees like windshield wipers back and forth, back and forth. Your feet will want to evert while you do this. Don't let them. So every few reps, I want you to double check. Yes, my feet are parallel. I'm twisting so much that my butt cheek is coming up off of the floor and I'm laying on my opposing hip. What I want you to keep on the floor is your shoulders. If you know that your knees love to go internal when you stand, that's just where they deviate towards, you might wanna bring your feet a little bit closer together. That'll give you a more outward rotation. If you know your knees love to turn external and your knees point out from each other, you might wanna separate your feet a little wider and that's gonna force you to get even more internal rotation. So those are just little nuances you might wanna add as you get to know your posture. There's another way that I was told how to do these knee drops. And again, they're just little nuances. They're not right, they're not wrong. You can treat it like a frog. So you can draw open with the outside leg you end up in a frog and let that leg pull the other leg across. So it's like an open drop, drop, open drop, drop. And you get this inner thigh stretch as well. It's just another way of doing it. You don't have to, but you might enjoy that better. You might get more of a benefit out of it. Who knows? Just giving you everything that I can think of. Okay, upper spinal floor twist is next. We're gonna hold for one minute on each side. So I want you guys to lay over on your right side. Let's do right side so that my cues are uniform. Bring your legs to that static back position where we were in a few minutes ago, 90 degrees, knees and hips. Stack your hands. I'm gonna take your bottom hand, your right hand. Hold your knees in the vertical stack. You do not want your knees to slide. It's as if there is a wall in front and both of your kneecaps are touching the wall. They must stay on the wall while you do this move. Top arm is gonna open just like a book. My wrist, elbow, shoulder, and opposing shoulder stay in the same line. Do not let your knees slide. One minute. If this hurts your shoulder, you can rest your hand on your ribs. You can also rest your hand on a stack of pillows behind you. When I was rehabbing my shoulder, that's what I was doing. The tissues were screaming at me and it was very difficult to even hold my arm in this position. So I had to rest it on a stack of pillows. You will get there in time. If it still sucks, just skip it. If you think about it, this move can also be done sitting in a chair. So I'm sitting in a chair and just twisting my chest in one direction, keeping my knees in place though. Do not let your hand slide down towards your butt. I'd rather have your hand almost in line with your ear or the top of your head than 
close to your butt. We want the stretch to come through your chest and we want the shoulder blade to retract back. Other side. Your head eventually will be pointing towards the opening arm. But when I get started, I usually have a little tension in my neck and I don't even turn my head up towards the ceiling right off the bat. It feels good to look up towards the ceiling after a few seconds. Maybe I'll look towards the hand after a little bit longer. But that's where you want the head to eventually be. But you have to listen to your body. So if it bothers you, Put your head in a position that feels good. That's all. That's all. <sighs> Agascu is really based on listening to the body. Agascu isn't about a bunch of experts telling you what you should do. It's about the experts helping you to listen to your body and you're both finding things out on your uh, together about your body come to hands and knees we're going to do cats and dogs if you can't do cats and dogs on hands and knees just sit in a chair all we're doing is rounding and arching the back we're going to go for 10 of these hands under shoulders knees under hips i'll say that one more time hands under shoulders knees under hips make sure they're there all i'm doing is taking my back into an arched position and around position, flexed and extended, flexed and extended. You can do this sitting in a chair. The moves are gonna get really tough now. So enjoy your break while you have it. We're moving into flutter kicks and a five minute long sitting floor. Oh, I'm gonna be crying with you. Okay, flutter kicks are these. You keep your knees straight, you keep your ankles still, and we're gonna be moving from the hips. So I know some of you had a really hard time last time we encountered flutter kicks and you wanted to get a modification for that. Some of you have a really hard time picking both of the legs up and being able to do a move like this. So if that bothers you and you can't quite do that, lift one leg, put it down, lift another leg, put it down. You can even do single leg raises laying on your back, but just keep the leg stiff. This is a hip motion. I don't care how high you go. You could do 10 on one side, 10 on the other side. You can even do this sitting in a chair. It's, it's, it's really easy to modify this move for so many things. All we're moving is from the hip. Try not to bend your knees, everybody. So I'm gonna give you flutter kicks. Maybe we'll do 100, maybe you'll do 10. I like to put my hands underneath my butt when I do this. I keep my knees straight always just because I can. And I'm gonna keep my ankles dorsi flexed for the first 10. And then I'm gonna point them and go into plantar flexion for the next 10, back and forth. Need a break? Go ahead and take a break. I'll do it for you. <laughs> I'll do the work for you, not the break. You guys can do the break. I'm gonna sit here and keep doing the work. Flutter kicks. Again, if this is too hard for you to pick up both of your legs, do one leg at a time. Lift, lower, lift, lower. <sighs> yes, I am doing 300 flutter kicks. All for you guys, because I see that three of you don't want to do 100, so I'll do it for you. I'm kidding, everybody. I hope you're getting your heart rate up a little and you feel a little sweat like I have. Relax. Oh, that felt good. Hope you guys got some of that done. We're going into sitting floor for five minutes. This move is tough. If you're new, I want you guys to test yourselves. When you're sitting with your legs straight out in front of you, do you have the ability to put an arch into your lower back? Some of you do not. Arch into your lower back means it's coming from your hips. So it looks like this. It is not this. I'm not lifting my sternum. So if that's what's happening to you and you're, ugh, you're cheating by lifting your sternum, I want you to put your back up against the wall. 
if you're like me and you're working on the toughest challenge, which is no wall, then we're going to be doing this sitting on the floor with nothing. For your wall people, you're going to walk your back all the way to the wall. I know I've got the baseboard here, but just giving you, giving you the walkthrough. You're going to walk yourself all the way back. Bend over so that your tailbone is against the wall. The three things I want you to think about, tight thighs, dorsiflexed ankles, and shoulders squeeze back. That's it. You're going to sit there for five minutes. Everybody else, come cry with me. <laughs> Set my timer. We've got one more part to this exercise, which is holding that arch in our lower back. So here's how I do it. I tighten my thighs, I dorsiflex my ankles, I roll the arch into my lower back from my hips, from my groin here. Oop, there it is. My shoulders are actually really relaxed because this is coming from my groin. Hands up on my thighs, shoulders pinch back, five minutes. Good luck. Yes, my thighs are engaged. Yes, my ankles are dorsiflex and my toes are pulling backwards towards me. Everybody on the wall, thighs engaged, dorsiflex, ankles, shoulders pinned back. Everybody on the floor with me, with no wall, hip flexor engaged, or really rolling my pelvis forward. <sighs> this is not an easy move. Everybody who's on the wall, you're probably not going to need a break. Maybe you will, maybe. If you do, take a break. Everybody who's on the floor, usually when I hit like 30, 45 seconds, I start feeling my mid and upper back kicking in. That tells me my hip flexor just shut down and I'm starting to cheat. So I'll take a little break, reset, make sure I pull from my groin. There it is, shoulders back, thighs tight. That happens a few times while I sit here. The great thing about teaching this class is I get to actually see video of me and I notice I have a tendency to lean too far forward. So my shoulders actually weren't stacked over my hips. So I got an angle of that and caught it with my eye and I leaned back and that changed this exercise. Now it's so hard. <sighs> You're crying with me, aren't you everybody? You got a little more than three minutes left. I hope your legs are shaking like mine are. Yes, they should be. This is a hard exercise. <sighs> One of the Ugaski therapists in California, Tim, really good guy. He was working with a San Francisco 49er who had an elevated shoulder. He left that man in this move for 20 minutes. And finally, his shoulder let go. How did he know that this was the move that was going to do that? That's where intuition kind of ties into being an Agoscu therapist. But he knew hips are connected to shoulders. He left that guy there for 20 minutes, shaking, crying. Good, stay in it. <laughs> A little more than two minutes left, everybody. If you're noticing, just like I did, my mid-back starting to kick in, my hip flexor shut down. Shake it out. Reset, there it is, shoulders back. Everybody on the wall, you are not putting an arch into your lower back. You're only doing three things, thighs tight, ankles dorsiflex, shoulders pinned. Everybody on the floor without the wall, we are putting an arch into our lower back. We're really kicking on the hip flexors, iliopsoas and tensor fascia latte. Delicious. <laughs> Remember the first time I did this routine along with Pete on the YouTube, I was cursing at the screen. <laughs> I didn't care how handsome the guy was, I was cursing at the screen. This is so hard to hold. Everybody's leg shaking like mine, I hope so. Less than a minute and a half, stay with me.
Again, if you'd rather hear Pete Agoscu talk you through this routine, it's the feet and femur active routine. You'll see a handsome blonde guy in the thumbnail doing this move. <laughs> Agoscu, feet and femur. Oh, less than a minute, Kim, come on. Come on, hang out there. Actively drawing your shoulder blades together, actively keeping your thighs tight, actively keeping your ankles dorsiflex. Stay with me. Whether you're on the wall or on the floor, you're doing those three things in the very least. Five seconds, come on, hit it hard. <laughs> Wow, that went fast. How's everybody's legs feel? <laughs> Give me 10 cats and dogs. I didn't demonstrate cats and dogs in a chair, so I'll do that now. You can do it on your hands and knees or you can do it sitting in a chair. Whew, feel those hip flexors right here, everybody. <sighs> so here's your demonstration of cats and dogs in a chair. It's the same thing, same thing. Just rounding the back, back and forth. We're moving on to one of the kids' workouts. I think you're gonna enjoy it. There's a couple of moves in here that Pete just makes up on the spot. They're great. So you're gonna see a couple of things that we haven't done before, but you're gonna have fun. Stork walks, we're gonna do them forward and back. I'm just gonna give you a minute to do it. Stork walks are pretty simple. Interlace your hands behind your head and draw your elbows back. It's like the elbow curls that we did, except we're not doing that funny grip on your temples. Now your hands are interlaced behind your head. If you can't get that done, put your hands on your shoulders and draw your elbows back. In the very least, put your hands on your hips and draw your elbows back. We wanna keep the shoulders pinned. Now stork walk looks like this. I'm lifting my knee up to hip height. Remember that move that we did, our functional test? We're walking around forward and backward. Knee up to hip height, walk around, and then go backwards. Don't bump into anything but there's no reason why we shouldn't be able to go backwards a few steps. No reason, no reason. Unless you're telling yourself you're getting dizzy. <laughs> Humans were meant to walk backwards. If we weren't, we wouldn't be able to do this. When I used to address big groups of people, I had this great photograph of a cat sitting in this horrid squat position, slumped over, licking itself. And I said, were we designed to do this? And it's a trick question. Of course we were designed to sit like that or else we wouldn't be able to. Then I show a picture of a horse and I ask, was the horse designed to do the backstroke? Ah, now things come to light. Keep your elbows back strong, everybody. So the horse was not designed to do the backstroke. It can never do the backstroke. That's the difference. Okay, guys, I've been taken into a free squat, but we're going to punch while we do it. So I want you to keep your feet hip distance. Think about that nice S curve in your lower back that we've been working on. I'm going to keep the arms forward and we're going to go between punching forward and punching up while we do our squat. So I'm just sitting in the chair that isn't there. I'm going to do this for one minute. I don't care if you get two punches out or two million punches. You're going to punch forward. And then you're gonna punch up. Do two, do three, do a few seconds worth. Punch forward and punch up. That's all I'm doing. Yes, it's gonna be getting your heart rate up. Good for you. Good for you. Let your blood pump your heart. And what I'm understanding nowadays, that is actually what's occurring. Read this fantastic article and it just blew my common sense away that the heart does not have the ability to pump blood. It actually doesn't. There's no way that it can pump that blood and push that blood all the way into your capillaries. There's another force called electricity that draws the blood. And one more thing, 
Relax, everybody. Whew, it actually felt really good. Really good. I'm going to take you down to the floor now. We're going to work on tabletop leg raises. If you cannot hit the floor, you can do this in a chair. Tabletop is tough for me to do, but I'm going to do it anyway. Tabletop is you're sitting on your butt with your feet on the floor and your hands are on the floor behind you. I don't care for now which way your hands point. Just point them in a direction that feels okay for you. We're going to come to the tabletop position and we're going to lift one leg, put it down, lift the other leg, put it down. Yes, you can get this done in a chair. It's going to be a little easier maybe in a chair. So you can just lift your butt up off of your chair and do the same thing. That's it. So get creative if you can't hit the floor with me. I'm going to do this for a minute. Tabletop leg raises. Hands down, lift your butt. If it's too hard for you to do, put your butt on the floor or get your butt in a chair and work it from there. Again, this is one of the kids' workouts. Look at how far we've fallen, everybody. How far we've fallen. You ask a kid to do this, no problem. Boom, on the floor, doing it. How many of you are having a hard time with it, feeling weak doing it? That's how far we've fallen. We have fallen so far. Relax. Run or march in place. Very simple. You can march or you can run in place. Jog in place. That's basically what I'm doing. I'm not really running. I'm jogging. I jog over to my window. I need a little more air. I need a cross breeze. Okay, friends, I'm gonna take you into lateral bear crawls like I promised. I think there was something else I promised you, but I forget. <laughs> okay, lateral bear crawl can be done on the floor, can be also done using your couch. This was our modification for last week. It's like a downward facing dog with your knees and hips bent really deeply. That's all it is. So here's our modified version of it. You can put your hands on the couch. I want you to try to keep your weight over your hips. So this is what you'll be doing if you need to modify. On the floor, well, I don't need to modify. Same position, hands and knees, knees bent deeply. I'm reaching my right leg. It's gonna look opposite on the video. My right leg all the way out, knee is straight. I'm moving from my hips, so shift your hips. Weight stays over your hips, and my hands follow. My hands and arms are not the driver. Step out, shift. It's like I'm pulling my butt over my knee using my leg. Extend out, pull. I want you to think about pulling from your leg. We're going to work on this for a minute. Pull. It seems counterintuitive because a lot of weight is on your hands. You feel that? Like you're pushing yourself back, almost going into a handstand. I want it to be opposite. Try to shift that weight over your hips, hips and legs. Stay with me, everybody. Thank <sighs> you. 
20 seconds, stay with me. And time, time everyone. Take it into cats and dogs, either on hands and knees or on your chair. <clears throat> Excuse me. Come to a standing position. I'm gonna do a standing overhead stretch. And we're also going to do arm circles. If arm circles are too tough for you to do, um, might be too much leverage on your shoulders. You can do shoulder circles. Remember, if you're doing the shoulder circle, you want a full circle. Try to go 10 in each direction. So if arm circles are too hard for you or they're causing some pain, you're gonna do shoulder circles. Let's take the hands into the modified golf grip. Remember that, gonna keep that. Now you can do arm circles, standing, kneeling. You can do them in a sitting floor position. In fact, I'm gonna do mine kneeling today. If you're standing, do it just like we started out with, with your feet parallel and straight ahead. Take the grip with your hands, squeeze your shoulders together, then bring your arms out to the sides. We got 40. My palms are down, I'm circling in the direction of my thumbs but I'm also keeping my belly relaxed. Do not suck it in. You want the belly to stay relaxed so that this perturbance we're creating with our arms makes our torso kind of wobble back and forth. That's what's gonna turn on the hip flexors bilaterally to finish us out here. We're going to go backwards. I'm gonna turn my palms up and my thumbs point behind me. Remember, keep your belly relaxed. When we come to a standing position, we're gonna do standing overhead extension for one minute. When you do standing overhead extension, we want you to think about stacking your ankles, knees, hips, and shoulders. It's not a back bend. So don't let this happen as you do it. You just wanna stand normally with your feet pointed straight ahead, but you wanna move your shoulders through this full overhead extension. So I interlace my hands and press my palms away. Elbows are straight. This is the easiest place to get that. Now start to lift. Once you feel some tension, your elbows are probably gonna to wanna to bend. Stop right there if that happened to you. So my left shoulder does not wanna go all the way. So this is where I stop. I'm still working on rehabbing my left shoulder. So even though my right shoulder can, my right shoulder holds back so that we can work on getting this bilateral move accomplished. Notice I'm not leaning backwards. If you start leaning backwards, you try and too darn hard, dial it back. This is a move to teach your shoulders how to stack over your vertically loaded, load-bearing joints, ankles, knees, hips. And relax. Nice, everybody. We actually have another minute or so. So what am I gonna do? Give myself a nice air bench. I hope you will too. I'm gonna take it for 10 breaths. Put your back on a door or on the wall. Make sure your door is not going to go into the open position. Wanna make sure you're closing the door so it's pushing against the jam. And walk your feet out to hip distance and walk them out past your knees. Push your lower back into the wall, 10 breaths using my thigh muscles now to push my lower back into the wall. So this is really taking any twists that we might've created in our standing overhead extension and getting it out with a nice strong move. I'm 
If this is bothering your knees, just slide your hips higher up the wall and make sure your knees stay in line, tracking over your, the middle of your feet. Think about putting your fist in between your knees. Your fist should be right there and your knee should be almost hugging your fist. Two more breaths. Guess what? That's enough. You made it through and I gave you two workouts today. Congratulations. See you guys next week if you would be so kind to join me and I didn't murder you today. Have a great week.